Hold on, we'll just start recording. And now I guess I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Okay. Well, let me go ahead and stop the pre-show recording, which, I mean, there's it's, gold, it's, gold there. Yeah, it's just me going, hmm, and please. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Okay, let's let, let's let's do a show show. Okay. Welcome to Housewealth Roundtable, episode three hundred and forty-one. My name is Ben Bumhofer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. Hey, John. How Hello. You, how are you doing? Oh, hi, Ben. I didn't see you there. Uh, hi. <laughs> I would hope you would. Weird. I didn't expect to find you in the place we convene every uh, week to talk about stuff. Uh, yes, it's, it's good to see you. It is. And I got to say, it is especially good to see you this week because it's been a week. It's been a week. Uh, it's been there's been yeah. some ups. <laughs> there were some amazing ups this week. Uh -huh. And then there were some everything. There was some down. Down. <laughs> everything. Um. Before we get into it, uh, we're going to address the elephant in the room. And yes, we are going to talk about uh, everything that happened with the, the Hearthstone Grandmasters. So getting that out of the way. If that's not your cup of tea, who knows if we'll talk about anything else this episode? I don't. Yeah, I mean, realistically, Ben and I talked about it uh, before the start of the uh, show. And mm -hmm. I said, we're going to talk about it. And if I think about how long we allot for this show being an hour, it will probably be the show. So if you have had enough, uh, you know, maybe check us out next week. And yeah, exactly. uh, we'll be we'll be back to it. If you're or if you want to hear our take, sure. Stick around. If you're like, I just need more takes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, more takes, more takes, more takes. I just need oh. them takes. I will tell you, they're probably not hot takes because this is Friday. Right. It's been <laughs> it's been literally a week. Everybody has uh, has had a, a bite of this news story and now it's our turn. And honestly, everybody has said it better than we will. I yes. guess what we're really getting at is that this episode is 100 percent skippable. Yes. Unless you really like us for some reason. Sure. Well, there goes or the you really right. want to dislike us for some reason. <laughs> I mean, that already happens with you. So, you know, they just need to feel or feel better about it and hate me, too. Sure. We'll get everybody yeah. on board. Yeah. Hey, did you know that you can, like, put in ad breaks now? What? For the show? Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the dashboard for Twitch, and I'm like, hey, that's new, and you can put in ad breaks. All right. Well, let's not do that. Yeah, I know. I'm not going to. I just <laughs> it's really funny. Like, oh, we need to save it. Like, this is power. Actually, we shouldn't have because <laughs> oh, you know we will abuse it. It will just be nothing but. And Ben, I encountered perhaps the most shocking moment in my entire history of playing World of Warcraft, and it came the moment I turned the corner and saw. And then ad break. We'll be returning to John's <laughs> story right after a word from your sponsors or our sponsors. Here's what we do, though. <laughs> we don't we come back as if the ad played over the top of the show. So <laughs> ad break. And then after that, you just do the. Oh, my gosh. What? And he stuck it where? That's I can't believe that. I didn't think you could do it. I didn't think you could do it in World of Warcraft, but you can totally do it, and it fits. All right. Well, gosh. Uh, this has been an amazing episode of Ezra the Roundtable. Thank you for joining okay. Can we test it? I mean, we've told people what's happening. Can we just test it and see what it does? Well, the, the podcast is still going to record, but... The, right, the but they're in on the joke. Can... They're, that's fine. Okay. Can we try it? Okay, cool. Yeah, hold on a second. Um, let's see. I can do 30 seconds or more. Let's do, it'll be 30 seconds. So, okay. <laughs> Let's see what happens. All right. Get All right. ready. Okay. You'll know okay. when to do it. Okay. Tell your story. Okay. So Ben, I got to tell you uh, earlier today, the craziest thing happened to me. So oh, I yeah? was, well, I mean, you were, you were there for part of it, but I don't think you saw it because we went out to dinner and we went to in and out and mm -hmm. I said, uh, Ben, look at that. There's a haunted bus stop because there was a bus stop when the light was very strobey. And it was strobing a lot. Yeah. 
and uh, then just as I as the light strobed, you guys were like, "Yeah, that's kind of freaky." But the freakiest part was out of nowhere. After one strobe, I saw ad playing. Twenty nine seconds remain. Remember, you are still live. Oh, some people may not get get an ad. Oh, I guess. I, hey, subs. Guess what? You're not getting an ad right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. It's a reward. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is great. Our super serious episode about something horrible. <laughs> and we're just jumping into this. This yeah, this is totally you know, this is us in a nutshell, really. <laughs> okay, well, one second left. I can't believe that. That is the most amazing thing. And the the fact that we had never seen anything like that before, and we will never see anything like that again is absolutely amazing. I didn't believe in the supernatural until this moment in my life. It was shocking. I was, I was speechless. All right. And the nudity was acceptable. Yeah, it was tasteful, actually. In this circumstance. In yes. most circumstances, mm, not good. Now, any other circumstance, I'd say no. Mm-hmm. But, anyway, uh, anyway, this is going to be a serious episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm very serious. Um, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe skip it if you don't want seriousness. <laughs> Sorry, I totally derailed that. That is totally my fault. Uh, I mean, I don't want to put all the blame on you, but you can't dangle <laughs> that power in front of me and not have me immediately say, we need to wield this for evil. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, let's get down to the serious to business. business. Yeah, let's get let's get down to it. Now, I will say um one of the things that is different uh from what we will be talking about here today and what a lot of people have talked about mm -hmm. through most of the week is uh it took a long time, but Blizzard has officially posted a response and a a slight course correction to some degree um to what happened. Well, in in the off chance that some of our listeners aren't in the know. They don't have their fingers on the pulse of, well, anything <laughs> they Blizzard. They listen to no other shows <laughs> or anything. We're the one. And there, there is a possibility of that. Sure, let's talk about it. Okay. Um, so basically this story uh, basically revolves around the Hearthstone Grandmasters. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a player named Blitzchung. So let's start there. Um, yes. Because I think one of the things, and if we're going to get into our personal takes, I think one of the most important personal takes is about this player, Blitz Chung. Because, yes. Ben, if I come on this show and I say, our government sucks, our government's in chaos, it's a total nightmare here. Mm -hmm. I get to say that. It yes. might result in a couple of emails it might result in uh, a couple of tweets um but overall nobody cares nobody <laughs> nobody's really it doesn't make a big deal to anybody mm -hmm. else uh exactly uh, and the thing is it's our show we can say anything we want on our show that, we're running this that is going to become relevant later. But for right now, <laughs> what I'm talking about um, is the fact that it doesn't take a lot of bravery mm -hmm. for me to speak ill or even positively about the government at the moment. Um, it's not hard. There's not a lot of penalty for that. I'm not running a huge risk by doing so. Exactly. We, and, we have certain freedoms in this country that protect us against that too. And for Blitz Chung to do what he did, which is uh, basically um, during the interview portion of a Hearthstone, an official Hearthstone broadcast, uh, took a moment um, to make a political statement uh, about the current situation uh, between Hong Kong and China and the protests there, and basically backing support of Hong Kong. Um, and that's brave because there could be very real world implications to that. And, and not just, by all accounts from everything I've read, he was well aware that there was going to be repercussions for his actions. He, mm -hmm. he didn't do it and then go, what? Blizzard reacted disfavorably to me? What? This wasn't a popular decision? Like, he knew. Mm -hmm. um, but decided that the topic was important enough, the platform big enough, the moment right, uh, to go ahead and make this statement. And... 
I think that a lot of people have kind of moved along to the next stage of the of the of what happened. Yes. Uh, leaving that behind. And so for me, I think the first thing as far as my take goes is I want to recognize that like that's how stuff gets done sometimes. Sometimes you got to mm-hmm. take one on the chin. Sometimes you got to do the hard thing. You got to do the thing that's you know not an easy call and uh, he did that. And there were repercussions for it. And we'll get into all of that, but that's a brave thing to do. And yes. so that's kind of awesome. And, and that's my first take on the situation. It, it really is. And a lot of it comes from the situation that he's in. You know, it, like I said, um, you know, if John were to say it about our country on this show, no repercussions, like, like John said. There are incredible things that could happen in China, in Hong Kong, for speaking out against the government like very bad things. So it is incredibly brave of Blitzchung to say anything in the first place. And, you know, you just have to give him props for that. That, that is pretty amazing. And even not, uh, and you know, we're making it sound big, like, like that, but even just Blizzard's response, you know, if, if you know that Blizzard is going to have a response and you Mm -hmm. are a professional player, you have to consider the worst case scenario. Exactly. And to say, you know what, getting this message out there is better than the worst case scenario. That also takes guts, you know, Mm -hmm. like that's, that's no laughing matter. The amount of money that wound up being stripped away from him as a result of this, um, was not a small amount of money. Um, you know, it's, it's not something to just ignore. So, it's it's kind of a brave thing whether you're looking at bigger ramifications in like what would the country's response be or even just a smaller thing of how is this going to impact my passion my hobby i mean if he's doing it professionally it's not even really a hobby you know that decision to dive into those waters is tough that's very true very very true so the next part of this is what happened as a result of it. And what happened uh, is uh, Blitzchung was suspended, not allowed to uh, compete in Hearthstone Grandmasters for a year, uh, was stripped of all winnings, and I can't remember if there was something else. I had the original story up, and I replaced the original story for now the kind of the blizzard response and as a result i suddenly feel lost and ill prepared do you remember ben uh sorry i'm double checking certain things and didn't fully hear exactly what you said oh you weren't listening (laughs) to me no i'm working on some technical things that i want to make sure we have in place anyways oh okay um so what what did you just ask i'm sorry i know this is horrible entertaining stuff but uh so basically the punishments for the okay. initial for the initial action. Okay, the initial action was they they took all his his earnings away, mm-hmm. all all prize money that he had won up to that point. Couldn't compete and in then, grandmasters for a year, yeah, for a year. Uh, and I thought there was a third uh, thing. I think it's essentially couldn't compete in anything Hearthstone for a year, okay. like anything Blizzard run at least. Um, and and that was Blizzard's reaction. And, oh, and also um, suspending the the two shoutcasters as well for a year. Right. So. Uh, so that was that was the Blizzard reaction, and that is kind of what set off this past week um, was a lot of people had a lot of feelings on that. Uh, there were people who felt immediately that this was blizzard caving into china they obviously blizzard makes a very strong effort to have a presence in china uh china has a five percent uh you know controlling interest in activision blizzard um so there is a lot of money there five percent doesn't sound like a lot but that works out to a lot of money and a lot of people felt like this is blizzard immediately just 
you know, bowing to what they want. There were some people who took a little bit more moderate of an approach and said, oh, this seems, uh, this seems like the thing that should have happened. You can't get up there and make a big uh, political statement, good, bad, or otherwise, and not expect repercussions, but maybe these repercussions were a bit much. And then there are people that just said, no, Blizzard just did what they were supposed to do. China had no part of it. It is what it is. Like, that, you know, take your take your lumps. You decided to do the thing, take your lumps. Mm -hmm. So the reaction was kind of all over the board. And a lot of people were mad. And when I say a lot of people were mad, it wasn't just us. It wasn't the typical crowd. You know, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't Twitter and Reddit. It was and the forums. It was or, or the people who just hate Blizzard because right. It was even people within Blizzard themselves. You know, mm -hmm. we heard reports following it of signs taped over "Think Globally" and "Every Voice Matters" on the orc statue out front. Uh, there was a small protest that occurred where people walked out and mm -hmm. kind of camped out in front of the orc as a public display of "We don't like this." Fans got very upset, took a lot of actions, some of them good, some of them bad. Um, a lot of reports of things started to come out, some of them true, some of them false. Uh, it basically reached a level where uh, senators were talking about this thing. It, it reached the actual government level, and we were getting tweets and things like that. So this thing blew up in a way that I don't think many people anticipated um and i know i certainly didn't think that i woke up the morning that i saw the news of it and i read it and i was like mm, that doesn't seem good and like that was about my full reaction uh from seeing it in bed when i woke up and by the time i got to work you know the span of maybe 20 minutes or so by the time i got to work it was all anybody was talking about it had overtaken everything and things were crazy uh mm -hmm. th things had officially blown up so i guess this is where we need to talk about because kind of looming over this whole discussion ben is the knowledge that blizzard has now responded changes have yes. been made but i think that it's not doing us a service which is you and me coming here to talk about our feelings on this which we have not talked about you no. are you know some of my thoughts because i i've tweeted some and wrote some in discord but you and i have not spoken about them um part of this is talking about it in the perspective of where we were as of literally yesterday you know or yes. even earlier today even yeah, um, considering that the the statement by Blizzard came out at like five fifty five our time or something like that. It, yeah. it was, yeah, very very recent in the 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 timeline of everything. So i i want to I want to get your take because I haven't heard really anything from you. I've got an idea, but yeah, when you kind of finally came to a grasp of what all had happened, where was your head at? What were you thinking? Well, before anything, I think that we need to put out there that this is, and, and some people completely disagree with this, but this is a very complex situation. It, it's not cut and dry, free speech was stopped or punished. It, it, it's not as cut and dry as that, like at all. First and foremost, I am extremely disappointed with Blizzard, with their, their gut reaction of what happened. Now, this isn't, I, I guess the best way to put it is, is this is like, I, I don't know if it's the, the, the China division or the, the Hong Kong division or whatever, but it, it's that side of things that made the, the, the very quick decision on it. And they did it wrong. You know, no matter which way you went about this, it was handled incorrectly. Um, one thing that I will say is that something did have to happen because uh, there is an, an agreement that Blitz Chung did sign that said, hey, you know, I'm not going to, and my legalese and everything is not going to be nearly as, you know, well as it could be. And I'm definitely not going to be saying this as eloquently as anybody else because 
when it comes to this type of stuff, you know, I am partially ignorant. I try to research as much as I can before trying to make some sort of statement or opinion. But overall, if you're in some sort of competition like this and you agree to certain things like, hey, I'm not going to do anything that brings Blizzard into a bad light, brings, you know, big attention to me because of whatever, anything like that. Something does need to happen because of that. Um, Taliesin put out a video earlier today that explained this whole concept much better than I can. I'm not going to, you know, take any credit for any of the, the ideas or the things that he said. He, he said it very well. But it comes down to the point that because Blitzchung did put that out there, that is the reason why he was punished way too severely than what he should have been, in my opinion. Because, I mean, taking everything that somebody has worked so hard for away and doing it the way that, that they did, wrong. I can't state that enough. Their silence about it for this long, I think has been absolutely horrible too. But at the same time, I understand where they want to get the right spin about it and get it out there and try to stop these, you know, this grand giant mess that they've created. Um, personally, I don't think that they did it to appease China. I don't think that they did it to, you know, stoke those flames. But that's my personal opinion. You know, uh, I mean, that's what we're here talking about. Yeah. Um, I understand that, yes, there are, or there is a Chinese company that owns 5% stock in Blizzard. That sucks. That is a really hard thing to kind of, you know, look at objectively in this type of situation. Um, going in and actually looking at, you know, the meaning behind these protests, what it all means and everything. That's helped me come to terms with, you know, kind of where I see this and totally agree that, yeah, Hong Kong, free Hong Kong, all of that needs to happen. But what he did was against the rules. And the thing is, is if that's allowed, then Blizzard needs to allow it for any other person. And as Taliesin said, what if it's someone you don't agree with? What if someone starts politicizing in their acceptance speech and everything, something that is absolutely horrible about, oh, slavery should come back if you give equal like speech to one person, you have to give it to everybody else. And um, that's so here's where we start to, here's where I start to struggle. Okay. Um, because I don't a hundred percent think that's true. Okay. Um, and I will admit I'm a bit of an idealist. Uh, yeah. and, and I have a tendency to say, okay, let's use common sense. And we live in a world where we have, laws and some real heavy structure because people are incapable of doing such things. I think we should live in a world where we see a government oppressing people and people wanting to be free of that oppression and someone speaking out for them and we should know that that is a positive and good message and deserves a platform and somebody standing up and saying, well, because genetically my skin is this color, I'm superior to other people, that is a bad message that we should not allow a platform. Mm -hmm. And realistically, yes, we live in a world where if we allow one, we have to allow the other. But there's a level of, what are you going to do? Rules got to be rules that I just don't like because there is good and there is bad. I no, don't I, need people... I fully agree with that. I don't necessarily need laws to remind me about some basic moral implications in this world. I know mm -hmm. not to go into a church and just start screaming while people are trying to do a sermon, even if I'm not that religion, even if I don't mm -hmm. believe in what they're saying. Uh, general common courtesy and being a damn human being tells me not to go do that, that that's probably not proper behavior and that if i did that there should be ramifications for it yes i don't there need are there plenty to of people be... who don't agree with that though and do those things and i don't like them well exactly and that's that's what i mean that's why these rules yeah. are there but for me like to break it down 
because I saw a lot of dialogue that was, well, what are you going to do? You, a lot of you already do, uh, you know, work with companies or participate in things run by companies that have a far bigger stake in China. Why is everybody picking on Blizzard? That was kind of the big thing that I kept hearing was like, why are we all picking on Blizzard for this? And here's the thing. You can make your issue trying to figure out the... And also, let me wind right before I wind up. <laughs> let me wind back. Uh, okay. Step back. People listening to this show, we're talking about geopolitical situations. I don't we think your kids... In this. <laughs> I, I, I don't think kids are going to be listening to this, but on the off chance you've decided to let your kids listen to the geopolitical episode of Azeroth Roundtable... I am going to swear in this, and I do not expect Ben to censor it. So oh, I'm not going you've to. You've <laughs> been warned. It might happen. Um, anyway, we can decide, hey, I want to figure out the shit between the United States and China and make that your goal in this mm -hmm. debate and say, man, this situation is fucked up. We got yeah. to work this out. We got to solve this. What what is China making? You know, that was one of the things I saw so commonly. How many items in your house does China make? And I was like, who the fuck cares? Like, that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I'm trying to talk about here. Because, yes, there is a, a big issue with China's role on in politics in general, not just America. It impacts on a global scale. But I'm not going to be able to solve that. I'm not waking up upset and disappointed because of that. I might be upset about it when I think about it, but that's not the issue I was focused on. What I was focused on was I woke up and I saw a situation where, in my opinion, Blizzard reacted based on the country where a thing happened, and they reacted to save face in a way that seemed cowardly to me. Because I look at shows like South Park doing an episode that they knew was going to piss off China, and they literally called it Banned in China. They knew what was coming. Yeah. I look at John Oliver running a story where he makes fun of uh, Xi and calls him looking like Winnie the Pooh and gets HBO temporarily turned off in China. So what does he do? He adds a Winnie the Pooh depiction of him to the intro of the show so that it appears in every single episode of Last Week Tonight. And I look at those things and I go, fuck yeah, stick it to them. They don't get to tell us what to do. So yeah, stick it to them. Good on us. It, we do a lot of things wrong here. But when somebody steps in and says, well, this is how you're going to act, America and other countries, other democratic countries are pretty good at going, shut up. No, that's not how it works. We're going to do what the hell we want. Thank you very much. Like, we're mm -hmm. kind of obnoxious in that way, and it's kind of the way that I like us to be obnoxious. It's the one area where we hit that mark, and I'm like... Hell this yeah. This is the only uh, America <laughs> fuck yeah <laughs> right. thing that's great. It's kind of the only thing that makes me go, yeah. And a company that I really loved, Blizzard, didn't do that. And kind of went what I felt was in the opposite direction. And I'm throwing in a lot of seemingly what I felt, what I perceived. And you're going to hear a lot of that tonight. Because yeah. as we'll get to, Blizzard's official statement is that they didn't do it for that reason. And also, if you're just going off the facts, we don't know that they were influenced by China. There is nothing mm -hmm. that happened that says China was involved, China had any say, China had any influence. But in my heart and in my soul, I think they did. Not maybe in the someone came out of the shadows and was like, you need to do this or else we're going to take all our money from you. But it could have been that Blizzard was worried about that and reacted accordingly as a result, which is just the same. Like whether you were actively told something and did it or you did something because you were afraid of being actively told to do something, it's the same outcome. And in my heart of hearts, that's what I thought, that's what I feel happened. Because mm -hmm. I don't think that if I had been in the Hearthstone Grandmasters, which is a joke, 
in and of itself, because I am bad at Hearthstone, but if I was in the Hearthstone Masters and I stood up there and it came time for me to be interviewed and I said, we got to impeach Trump. Woo! I think there might be ramifications for my actions. I certainly don't think it would be the same ramifications. And as I saw in other news stories, other official broadcast people were throwing up signs about Hong Kong. Uh, players were making comments about it with no repercussions whatsoever. That was a different company doing that, though. That wasn't officially Blizzard. Well, and that could be part of it, too. But at the end of the day, here's my issue. And I've had a lot of people come out and say, well, we got to look at the facts and we got to look at the facts. And it's true. There, there are facts and elements to this that we know. There's a lot that we don't know. And there's a lot that we're being told that we can choose to believe or not. When I heard this story, I was convinced then, and I am convinced now, that this same situation in America would have happened differently. I believe that. A hundred percent, I believe that. And I'm extremely disappointed in Blizzard because of it. I partially agree. I, I still think that there would, would have been repercussions, but not as strong as what happened. And that's where we were, we're kind of similar in that. Um, I, I still think that if the Grandmaster Hearthstone person at BlizzCon went up and, woo, impeach Trump! I mean, first of all, I'd agree with him. But even more so, I think that there would have been a punishment of some sort. Not what happened, though. Not your suspension, not all of your winnings taken away, that that wouldn't have happened. I think that the severity of the punishment, again, came from that chapter of Blizzard thinking that's the way to do it. I don't know how, where the hierarchy is. I don't know who made the decision. I don't know why they did anything like that. Again, just the thing, don't know. No idea. But I also tend to try to look at the good in everything that I possibly can. And... Maybe that's my lacking. Maybe it's completely unrealistic. But, I mean, the thing moreover than anything else is that Blizzard isn't our friend. They're not a company that is, like, as much as they, you know, want to talk about their ideals and, and the placards that they have on the orc statue and everything like that, those are things that, yeah, it's great to try to push for, but overall they are a company. Companies that are especially publicly traded companies, which is the only way that China, any company in China can own a piece of them, they go for the profit. They go for shareholders. This is what they're going for. It's been like this for a long time now. I'm not saying old Blizzard wouldn't have done this. Who knows? Because that situation didn't even come close to happening 10 years ago, 20 years ago, back when you know Blizzard was more uh, homegrown and, and, and had a, a more what feels like, you know, nuclear relationship within themselves. I, I would like to think that they would have, but right now, no idea. I feel like Tetsemi in the chat room is like my personal press conference. And he's like trying to get a, <laughs> he's trying to get a quote out of me because he says, so John, <laughs> do you think the line in Blizzard's response? I want to be clear. Our relationships in China had no influence on our decision is a lie. Yes. Ted Semi, I do. I think it's horseshit uh, because they reversed the decision. <laughs> like, they don't, they care about the profit. That's the reason the decision was made in the first place. That's the reason parts of the decision are being walked back now that it's impacting it on the other side. It's a business. Like Ben just said, they're a company. There are people I adore who work for Blizzard. There are people mm -hmm. I adore who have worked for Blizzard and don't anymore. There are incredibly creative, passionate, wonderful people in that company. It is a company made up of talented, loving, great individuals. But at the end of the day, it is a company. Mm -hmm. And there will be things that that company does, and that company does not care about you. 
for the record, I feel this way about just about every company. I will say yeah. it about companies <laughs> I literally work for. They do not care about you. They don't care about their customers. They care about profits. It is extremely rare to find a company that genuinely does. And even when it does, there is going to be a line in the sand at some point. And so, yeah, I don't believe their response. I just don't. I, I, they waited so long to put it out. Like, if this was an oops, yep, you're right, it was too harsh. That could have been reversed pretty quickly. It's been a week, and they're only just now getting to a very targeted response. Like, I get the impression, if you want me to put on my tinfoil hat and, and really get down to it, I get the impression that they sat around and they waited to see where the real sticking points were. And the general consensus around the people that are being reasonable about this is that he did a thing that was brave and we agree with, but was ultimately wrong. He should have been punished for it, and the punishment was too severe. And what do you know, miraculously, a week later, the one area that they've targeted walking this back is saying, oh, I swear, China didn't have anything to do with it, and here we made the punishment less severe. Please love us again. Okay. <laughs> I mean nothing that I can say or do or Blizzard can say or do will, will change your mind on that. Right. It, because it, it it is what you fe think, how you feel about the situation. And that's perfectly fine. And it's incredibly legitimate. Yeah. Um, again, I, I'm looking at it as maybe the top talked to that branch and said, hey, change it. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I have no idea of the inner workings and everything. I just, and again, maybe I'm just too naive and... Yeah, I mean, people have said it about me plenty of times. You know, optimism's bullshit. You know, why are you doing that? Be realistic or be pessimistic, and then you don't have to worry about being upset or disappointed. And me, I choose to believe that China didn't influence them. I think that they did something. They made a, a brash mistake. They know they fucked up and changed it so that it wasn't as bad. I mean... There have been times in the past that Blizzard has just pulled the gun on something and fucked up big time mm. and then reversed it. You know, talking about something just tiny, like bans for people buying duped items from an auction house. Sure. I mean, they had plenty of people banned and then went back on that as well. Granted, it's not to the level of a uh, an international incident, but, you know, it, it it's not the first time that Blizzard's fucked up and it's definitely not going to be the last time. No, but it, to me, there is a there's a point where you say, how much credit are we going to give them that they oopsed backed into an international incident? Oops! <laughs> <laughs> that nobody was around. Like, it's one thing to say, how did you guys not realize that garrisons were going to wind up being bad? Like, that's one thing. <laughs> Okay, I can see it because I thought garrisons were going to be great. I was right there with them. And then we got six months in and I went, oh. And then suddenly you, all of Africa has declared war on Blizzard. You know, like, <laughs> oh, actually, garrisons might not be a great idea. I can see how as developers and as a company, and this is kind of a silly example, they accidentally backed into garrisons being bad. Mm -hmm. What I don't see is how they did it with an international incident that blew up into this scale. Um, and that's, again, it could be me being jaded. But honestly, I like to give Blizzard the benefit of the doubt. I know that's not going to be easily believed here because I have a tendency to not just go, I love everything they put out and it's all wonderful. I have a tendency to say, I like this, I don't like this, they screwed up here, they didn't do this, they should have done this. I will speak my mind and tell you, and as a result, people have a tendency to think I'm harsh towards them, when in fact the opposite is true, I love them too much. But at a certain point, and that point for me during this incident was this, when I sat down, I was mad at first, then I thought about it rationally, and I came to a place where it was like, well, they probably did what they had to do. 
And that was where I was feeling that first day for a big chunk of the day. I was just mm -hmm. sitting there and there's a lot of people that felt that way. There's a lot of people that still felt that way. Um, you know, that Blizzard just did what they had to do. And people have made the situation way more complicated than it needs to be. There's a lot of people thinking that. And that's how I was thinking. And then I just sat there and thought, then why do I feel so fucking awful about it? You know, mm -hmm. like, why is it in the pit of my stomach that I'm just sitting here going, I'm like, why am I sitting here mad at Blizzard? If I'm giving them, if, I, if I'm being honest and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt and saying, no, they had to do it, then why in the back of my head right now am I like, I'm so disappointed? And the reality is because I didn't believe them. And that's why I'm here now telling you I didn't believe them. And I still don't. Well, question for you. Is it because they've backpedaled on the severity? Like, if they had stayed where they were, do you, do you, do you think that you would feel better about it? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be happy with that outcome. Well, yeah, obviously, but, um, obviously. But at the same time, there is something to be said that if you say, we were following our guidelines, China had nothing to do with it, we followed our guidelines, and we will continue to follow our guidelines, knowing that that's going to royally piss a bunch of people off, there's a lot of credibility to that. When you do the song and dance to try and give what seems to be people exactly what they want, everybody, the player's still getting punished, the penalties being reduced, we're assuring you that China had nothing to do with it, we've acknowledged that our values need to be better expressed and addressed, like, and you do it a week later, yeah, I, it, it doesn't... I'm going to look at it a little more skeptically. And that's my maybe natural skepticism towards a large company. Um, but here's, here's what I th really think before we move on to their response, because we've touched on it a little bit, and I do think yeah. we should address well, it. Well, I have one more follow-up question. Okay, so, sure, uh, sure, go ahead. Okay. If Blizzard had done the, the six-month punishment and kept the money in the first place... Would you still feel the same way? Um, if it had been a light punishment out the gate? Yes. I don't know if this would have hit that same level if that was the case. I mean, I can't say for sure, right? Like, oh, yeah. But if, if they came out the gate and the punishment for him... Because if I'm being honest, when I read the article, it was like he made a political statement and there was repercussions because at first it was just punished that was as mm -hmm. far as i knew and i was like okay that makes sense to me you know you get up there you say something all right and then as i started reading i was like and they did what and they and they took his earnings like what is this and like it just kept going and i was like this seems really crazy and i i was like this seems like too much that was kind of my steps into the water of what this mm -hmm. was if it was a much lighter penalty, I don't know if I would have felt so strongly out of the gate. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, honestly, I think that if they have done the lighter punishment, it, it wouldn't have blown up as, as big as it did. I really don't think so. Um, but it, it felt like, you know, it, it felt, it felt harsh and it felt harsh in a way that I think even if China had nothing to do with it, right? One of the things we in the democratic world have a tendency to think of when we think of people stomping on free speech and people's freedoms and stuff like that is the severity with which they do it. Mm -hmm. So when the punishment is severe, your mind kind of naturally goes to who's doing the punishing, right? Like, and that's not always great because it's making assumptions, but when you're dealing with a, an incident that's international and you hear that the punishment's super severe, my brain immediately thinks that was influenced by China because that's not how it would have gone here. Okay. But again, it to me... <clears throat> That still rolls into 
that branch is the one who ministered the punishment. Maybe that's more of a norm, and they thought that was a normal punishment. But again, m my naivety showing. Who knows? Um, but I do want to take a moment uh, to talk about something else that I think is important to this. And I think this is not getting said enough because I've listened to a lot of responses and I haven't heard very many people discuss this. At least not directly. Okay. As down on Blizzard as I have been, that is me being down on a corporate entity. Yes. Which is, in my opinion, beyond acceptable. Um, I have seen friends getting harassed for continuing to do Blizzard-related content. I have seen Blizzard developers getting harassed for working at a company that did a thing. I have seen people get yelled at in their chat channel for streaming Blizzard games. Are you serious? And even I have felt pressure when I was at my lowest about this, um, because one thing that, for me, WoW is my stress relief game. It is the comfort pillow of gaming for me. If mm -hmm. I have a bad day, if I have a bad week, I will play more World of Warcraft in that week than anything else because that game is comforting to me. It is uh, video game comfort food, food for my soul. Yeah. And oddly enough, after all this went down, it was the only thing I wanted because I was upset. And here's a game that is basically a video game hug for me, and that was what I wanted, and that was what I felt like I needed. And I sat there, and I was like, is this hypocritical of me? Should I play this game? Can I be mad at Blizzard and play World of Warcraft at the same time? And the answer is yes, you can, and anybody out there should feel okay doing it. Mm -hmm. If that's or what Hearthstone, you want or need. Or Overwatch or whatever. <clears throat> Any game. Yeah. But I debated about it for a while, and I, turn, I wound up turning on invisibility mode and logging in like that because I was like, well, I can't be mad at Blizzard and get called a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, yeah, I can actually do exactly that. Because, and this is what I agree most with with Taliesin's video, all of this is complicated. All of this is rough. All of this is, is too difficult to navigate. If we all tried to walk a path where we only did things that were tied to morally good <laughs> companies, businesses, people, we wouldn't interact with anything. We've all done shit in our lives we're not proud of. You know, some <laughs> of it's extremely severe. Some of it's not that bad. When I was in second grade, I stole money from the girl who sat next to me in class because I wanted to buy a little book from the book fair, and she made the terrible mistake of uh, having her money in her desk in such a way to where half of it was over in my desk because it was those desks that are, like, right oh, next yeah. to each other. So I opened my desk. There's money half in my desk, and I went <laughs> and took it. I was like, half in my desk. I got it. I look back at that, and I'm like, John, you knew. You know, at the time, I was like, it was in my desk. I forgot about it. I didn't forget. I was 98% sure that wasn't my money. And I took it because I wanted a book. Not proud of this moment. But I did it. Does that mean that people should never listen to this podcast ever again? John's amoral. Yes. He steals from children. Yes. Yeah, probably. I mean, no one should listen to this podcast in the first place. Point is, everybody <laughs> may not have done that, but have done things that they are not proud of. There are things that I have said. There are things that I have done that I wish I could go back in time and punch myself in the face and say, get your shit together. I don't think I would like younger me. I wouldn't want to spend time with younger me. That's part of growing. My point is, with all of this... <laughs> We are going to interact with things that are questionable. We don't have a lot of say in that. We can try. And if there's a line you don't feel okay crossing, 
then you need to be okay with that line. If you see what Blizzard did and you say, I can't go past that, that's okay. Where it becomes not okay is when you start trying to stop everybody else from crossing that line. You need to let other people find where that is. And you can get out there and you can talk to people about it. Like Ben and I are talking. We disagree. And I can tell Ben, Ben, come on, use your common sense. This was a China thing. And he can say, John, come on, be a little more optimistic. Stop being such a downer. It wasn't a China thing. They said as much. Blizzard said. And I can go, really? You're going to believe what Blizzard said? <laughs> we can go back and forth till the end of time. But at the end of the day, I respect Ben's views and opinions. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell him what he needs to do in response to this. And he's not going to tell me what I need to do in response to this. And nobody should be doing that to anybody else. Because first of all, if you're mad about this situation and you're using that to go tell other people what they can and can't do, you're doing the thing you're mad about. Just think about the hypocrisy of that for a second. You're mad because there's a government telling people what to do and what to say and how to act. So you're going to go out there and tell people what to play and how they're going to feel about things and what they're going to do. Knock that shit off. Well, I mean, to be fair, they're not a government. So, you know, they get the pass, right? No. <laughs> It is valuable to educate people. It is valuable to talk about people. It is mm -hmm. valuable to have a spirited debate. It is valuable to share information and ideas. It is not valuable to tell someone what to do unless you're telling them not to tell people what to do. This is the one case. I'm giving myself a pass. <laughs> this is Obi-Wan saying only Sith deal in absolutes. He gets an absolute, darn it. Because he has to, to establish that only Sith deal in absolutes. Okay, before we, we, we get to the response, which, I mean, we're going to go over on time. It's just how this is going. Um, I want to just swerve back and just reiterate the fact that Blizzard is a company. And that, like you said, there are thousands of people in that company who are not Blizzard. So very much so, like, I see people talking about employees getting, you know, harassment, death threats, stuff like that. And as you said, cut that shit out because that is the worst thing you can do. That is an overreaction times a billion. The people there have no control or control. Well, the vast majority of them have no control over anything that happened. They're the people who are still there who actually love their audience, who love working on these games and who are able to, you know, try to pour themselves into these things and share them with you. So lay off those people because fuck you if you aren't. <laughs> Best I got. Sure. Uh, so anyways. All right. So. <laughs> <clears throat> should we Blizzard's get, response should we get into blizzard's response i honestly think just the best bet is to just read it it's new as of today mm -hmm. uh so let's just read it it's actually dated tomorrow but whatever uh it's because of greenwich mean time mm. that's so mean <laughs> all right hello <laughs> blizzard community uh, by the way, just so we know, before people think this is me on another tirade, this is from J. Allen Brett. Ben, why don't you read it? I'm, my voice is going. <laughs> I'm let you read it. Great. Thanks, teacher. Now you have to read in public. <laughs> all right. Uh, hello, Blizzard community. I want to take a few minutes to talk to all of you about the Hearthstone Grandmasters Tournament this past weekend. On Monday, we made the decision to take action against a player named Blitzchunk and two shoutcasters after the player shared his views on what happens what, on what's happening in Hong Kong on our official broadcast channel. At Blizzard, our vision is to bring the world together through epic entertainment. And we have core values that apply here. Think globally, lead responsibly, and importantly, every voice matters. Encouraging everybody to share their point of view. The actions that we took over the weekend are causing people to question if we are still committed to these values. 
We absolutely are, and I will explain. Our esports programs are an expression of our vision and our values. Esports exists to create opportunities for players from around the world, from different cultures, and from different backgrounds to come together to compete and share their passion for gaming. It is extremely important to us to protect these channels and the purpose they serve, to bring the world together through epic entertainment, celebrate our players, and build diverse and inclusive communities. As to how those values apply in this case. First, our official esports tournament broadcast was used as a platform for a winner of the, this event to share his views with the world. We interview competitors who are at the top of their craft to share how they feel. We want to experience that moment with them. Hearing their excitement is a peaceful way, or is a powerful way to bring us together. Over the weekend, Blitz Chung used his segment to make a statement about the situation in Hong Kong in violation of rules he acknowledged and understood. And this is why we took action. Every voice matters, and we strongly encourage everyone in our community to share their viewpoints in the many places available to express themselves. However, the official broadcast needs to be about the tournament and to be a place where all are welcome. In support of that, we want to keep the official channels focused on the game. Second, what is the role of shoutcasters for these broadcasts? We hire shoutcasters to amplify the excitement of the game. They elevate the watchability and help the esports viewing experience stay focused on the tournament and our amazing players. Third, were our actions based on the content of the message? Part of Think Globally, Leading Responsibly, and Every Voice Matters is recognizing that we have players and fans in almost every country in the world. Our goal is to help players connect in areas of commonality, like their passion for our games and create a sense of shared community. The specific views expressed by Blitzchung were not a factor in the decision we made. I want to be clear, our relationships in China had no influence on our decision. We have these rules to help the focus on the uh, to help sorry. We have these rules to keep the focus on the game and on the tournament to the benefit of a global audience, and that was the only consideration in the actions we took. If this had been the opposing viewpoint delivered in the same diverse and deliberate way, we would have felt and acted the same. Okay, what could Blizzard have done better, and where do we go from here? Over the past few days, many players, casters, esports fans, and employees have expressed concerns about how we determine the penalties. We've had the chance to pause, to listen to our community, and to reflect on what we could have done better. In hindsight, our process wasn't adequate, and we reacted too quickly. We want to ensure that we maintain a safe and inclusive environment for all our players, and that our rules and processes are clear. All of this in service of another important Blizzard value. Play nice, play fair. In the tournament itself, Blitzchung played fair. We now believe he should receive his prizing. That's a weird way to say that. Anyways, uh, we understand that for some, this is not about the prize, and perhaps for others, it is disrespectful to even discuss it. That is not our intention. But playing fair also includes appropriate pre- and post-match conduct, especially when a player accepts recognition for winning in a broadcast. When we think about the suspension, six months for Blitzchung is more appropriate, after which time he can compete in Hearthstone Pro Circuit again if he so chooses. There is a consequence for taking the conversation away from the purpose of the event and disrupting or derailing the broadcast. With regard to the casters, remember their purpose is to keep the event focused on the tournament. That didn't happen here and we are setting their suspension to six months as well. Moving forward, we will continue to apply tournament rules to ensure our official broadcasts remain focused on the game and are not a platform for divisive social or political views. One of our goals at Blizzard is to make sure that every player, everywhere in the world, regardless of political views, religious beliefs, race, gender, or any other consideration, always feels safe and welcome, both competing in and playing our games. At Blizzard, we are always listening and finding ways to improve. It is part of our culture. Thank you for your patience with us as we continue to learn. Sincerely, J. Allen Brack, President of Blizzard Entertainment. All right. <clears throat> and that brings us to where we are right now. Thank you, Ben. That was very wordy. Yes. I don't yes, think I would have survived it, so I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Um, so that's where we're at. And... At the end of the day, and I think, Ben, both you and I, whether we agree on how we got here or not, mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, what we as players are deciding is how we feel about it. And it's hard to quantify a feeling. 
because it's not based on a statement that Blizzard put out. It's not based on the facts of what happened. It's not based on what we were told. It's not based on uh, what we were shown. It's based purely on what we believe and what we feel. And it can be very difficult to hear somebody say, I feel, and make a determination, especially if they don't agree with you. If they've somehow had the same equation and come out with a different outcome than you. You know, we tend to think along the lines of math. No, it should equal the same. If we've been presented the same problem, we should have the same mm -hmm. outcome. And it can be frustrating when the human being part jumps in and says, no, it turns out there is a thing that changes this from person to person, and people are going to take it on their own merits and have to decide. And that's where we're at. Because... We have the information we're going to get, especially following Blizzard's statement. This is what we have to work with. The odds of this changing are slim. We can look outside of what happened with Blizzard. We can say, well, this is a very familiar story to what's happening in other places. Mm -hmm. And we can say, is that impacting us? It could be could mean it's more likely that Blizzard did this because of China. You could read into it and say, oh, well, we're getting paranoid about it because we're seeing the NBA go through it and things like that. At the end of the day, for me, I don't believe Blizzard. In Just in my heart, I don't. I don't hate Blizzard. I don't hate the people there. I don't hate their video games. I'm going to continue to play World of Warcraft for the foreseeable future. I'm going to continue to do this show for the foreseeable future. At least through BlizzCon. I will say this. <laughs> uh, speaking of BlizzCon, I have not decided if I'm going this year. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that is still an issue to me because BlizzCon for me, there's a little element of job. But BlizzCon, to me, is a celebration of the game and the culture and the community and all of that. And there are elements of that I still feel very strongly in celebrating. But there are elements of that that I don't feel like celebrating right now. And it's not just this. It's not just HGC. It's not just Heroes of the Storm. It's kind of a lot of things. And it has all culminated in a, you know, people downstairs are having a party and you just want to lay in bed kind of feeling for me. So I don't know if, I don't know on BlizzCon. One way or another, we're going to cover it. Mm -hmm. Whether I actually go there or not, we'll see. I'm, I'm on the fence. But... I'm disappointed in Blizzard, and that is based purely on my feelings. And to anybody that's disappointed by that, I apologize. It's all I have to go on. My feeling is that Blizzard did this because of China. They can tell me it wasn't. It hasn't changed that feeling for me, and I can't change my opinion based on that. I can try and turn it off and say... I'm going to just go off of what I'm presented and I'm going to just work for, with the facts. I tried it. And at the end of the day, I still sat there not pleased with them. So I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to be honest with Ben mm -hmm. and I'm going to be honest with everybody around and say, I'm disappointed in him still. Is it the end of the world? No. Are there problems in this world that need to be fixed specifically with China and how we treat each other and all of that? Absolutely. Yes. yes. And Blizzard in this particular debate is not going to be the thing to do it, but at least this got more eyeballs on it, which is a good thing, and we can at least hopefully all acknowledge that there was some gain and good for this. And I think even Blitz Chung would say, the way this has blown up has been a benefit and a boon. And going back to the very first thing that we were talking about, which is it was a brave choice, mm -hmm. at least the level that this has reached respects the decision and i hope whatever blitz chung's up to at the moment they feel good about that 
that that would be a completely awesome place to stop, but I still have more to say. Because no, you go got your it. final word. I'm <laughs> turning it over to you. I'm pushing okay. it over to you, Ben. It's your turn. Yeah. Um overall, uh, you know, I'm I'm just gonna throw my my bit out there as well. I believe them. I believe that they know that they royally fucked up themselves and their own way, they're they're going back and trying to make amends. Uh, it, not only because Blizzard said so, I I just I that's what I feel. You know, you feel your way, I feel my way. It, I mean, God knows, you and I feel very differently about a lot of things. This is just another one on the list. But ultimately, you said it before. I don't hate you for it. I don't disrespect you for it. And it's just it, it's the way that it's going to be. Th this is a situation that is incredibly complicated to begin with. And then the fact that a statement was made today complicated it that much more, even though it, it was put out there to try to appease and fix and, you know, right a wrong that happened. Um, overall, I can believe them, but I'm with you in the fact that I'm still incredibly disappointed. I, I don't think that there was a, a perfect way to handle the situation to begin with. And Blizzard just, you know, screwed the pooch all over the place for this. And who cares? Well, no, actually, a lot of people care on the ultimate reason on why it happened. That, you know what I'm trying to get at. It's it happened. And as you said, a lot of focus has been put on it. And hopefully we can use this to advance goodness and and acceptance and a better world in the coming days, weeks, months, years. I mean, there's a whole huge group of gamers out there who had no idea of anything that was going on in Hong Kong. Now they know. This could help. And I'm definitely not saying that that was Blizzard's intention because that definitely wasn't. But you're right. It's this is one of those things where it's been a year for Blizzard where as a company, they haven't been looking too great to some of their most diehard supporters and some of their just fickle supporters too. It, it, I hope that they pull out of it. I hope that we see a return of Blizzard of old who really, really thrive on those, those, you know, mission statements, those, those, those ideals that are around that statue. I don't know if it's going to happen, but you know, I'm optimistic. So it could, we will ultimately see, we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, we have definitely gone over on this episode. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah. Um, um, but, as yeah. to the contest from last week, we're just jumping right into something super happy. Um, we're mm -hmm. going to wrap up this show. I'm, we're, we'll record something shortly after this because I still need to compile and we need to choose our winners and everything like that. Uh, we'll, we'll have it uh, on the recording, but uh, John and I will just kind of talk with the chat room for a bit while I compile everything and yeah then we'll and have you it'll numbers. give us a chance to answer some of the questions that i've seen in chat room i didn't necessarily i show already went long i didn't want to bog it down with that but yeah. if you guys got questions for us ask away and same to all of you out there um we're not really a mm -hmm. show that dives into emails and things like that but you can certainly send feedback um i think ultimately there's going to be some of you that are disappointed in both of us one of yeah. us uh, you know or the other you know, I think that there were a lot of people who were feeling very like, yeah, John, tell them, you know, tell them. Because I, I was probably, <laughs> I was a lot harsher initially than where I landed. Well, they, they just and, always expect you to, to hate on Blizzard. They don't understand your relationship with them. But, uh, but I have walked it back a little bit. I'm not hashtag boycotting Blizzard, which I'm sure is not going to be popular because I'm sure a lot of people want that and, and want people supporting that. But... You know, there's many reasons for that. If that disappoints you, if that lets you down, hey, you know, that's fine. We're going to all, like I said, it's all about finding our own comfort and our own place. And this is where I've landed. Yeah, for now, I could change my mind tomorrow. 
that's how people work as it turns out that you know what that's pretty accurate uh from what i've seen people change their minds Mm -hmm. yes but uh until uh next episode which uh we've got two great guests for next episode so i'm actually really looking forward to it yeah um until then john where can people find you uh, if you do want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Twitter at John underscore Jagger. I'll let you know where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be recording. I would encourage you also to check out the Dungeons & Dragons show I do, There Will Be Dungeons, as well as the video game podcast I do called Core. Core! So more information about both those shows can actually be found at frogpants.com. All right. Uh, if you're looking for me, I do a show called Box Fort. A new episode just posted today. Uh, I also play a game of Dungeons and Dragons on Plus Five to Hit and uh, talk about uh, running and playing in a game. Uh, check out DN Discussions. If you're looking for me on Twitter, I'm at Ben Bumhofer. And of course, this show, if this is your first episode, uh, not every episode is like this. We're a little bit sillier. But uh, feel free to check them out. You can find all of those episodes on AzerothRoundtable.com as well as iTunes, Google, um, Spotify, Alpha Geek Radio, a bunch of other places. Uh, the show's Twitter is at AzerothRT. You can uh, always tweet us there if you have any questions, comments. Uh, also, please email us. It's AzerothRoundtable at gmail.com. We're very interested on in your takes. And, uh, I mean, seriously, if, if you don't agree with us, everybody's entitled to their own opinion if you do agree with us great that again everybody's entitled um and of course we do stream friday nights uh check out uh twitch.tv slash azeroth rt and uh, we'll tweet out when we're streaming on friday so make sure to check that out yep that's right and a big thank you to people who have gone over to patreon.com uh slash azeroth rt and uh helped support this show uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, each week, we like to uh, send a special thank you out to the Murloc Club, which, did I sort this right, or did we get a bunch of new people in there? I know we got at least one or two. All right, well, I'm going to just go down the whole list. If some of these people are no longer parts of the Murloc Club, they're getting thanked today, because apparently I filtered it incorrectly or something. Uh, but we'll oh there we go that got it fixed okay <laughs> <laughs> well hey there's a thanks. really long list i was like we got a lot of patrons we, we didn't did. get that many <laughs> uh aaron brandon well they found out they could be patrons without being charged i would sign up to <laughs> uh aaron brandon o haster jesse o caleb m kilroy tastic and taryn thank you so much for being part of the murloc club <laughs> that's right um moreover than any other time i know i kind of said this last week but even more so now everybody out there deserves love deserves kindness so please be good to each other and we'll have those uh, results in a little bit after this really quick break hey break time oh i should stop the recording hey 